your syllabus here is saying that uh, you need to be able to outline an experiment to verify that the Broly's hypothesis, and here it says that, that a brief description of the Davison uh, Garner experiment will suffice. That's the experiment that they performed with the with the crystals, and they were bombarding the crystal uh, with um, with electrons, and and they heated the, the the crystal, and so then it behaved as a uh, basically as a lattice on which the on which the electrons were were diffracted. Or I think you could also use here the the double slit experiment uh, with the electrons that also proves. Uh, or is verifying the Broly's hypothesis. Now on this on this part in here which says that a student will solve problems involving matter waves, and here it says that for example a student should be able to calculate the wavelength of electrons after acceleration through a given potential difference. Uh, in your book on page uh, 337, uh, on page 337 the calculations are shown there. Uh, I also wanted to show show them to you right here. Basically, in all of these problems with matter waves, you start with the idea of waves being particles. So here's an energy of a wave uh, being equal to the energy of the particle given by the Einstein's equation m uh, times the velocity of the particle squared. And then you know you can do some. Here it says that you should be able to calculate the wavelength. So I'm changing the frequency into wavelength. Um, and uh, right here, instead of mass times velocity, I'm just changing into momentum to, to clear out the equation uh, a little bit. And uh, so here is the relationship for, for any particle. The wavelength of the particle is equal to the Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the particle. Momentum, of course, being the mass of the particle times the velocity of the particle. Um, here, if you, if you think of an electron being accelerated, so here I have a, a positive pole and a negative pole of a battery, for example, or it could be a, a capacitor, uh, basically an anode and a cathode. Right here is, a, um, is an electron, and it's accelerated through this potential difference of delta V. Of course, when it's accelerated through the potential difference of delta V, it picks up some energy, and the energy is equal to the, uh, when you multiply the, the potential difference times the charge of an electron, so times elementary charge. Okay, and uh, okay, so I have it here. So we can say that the energy of the electron, the kinetic energy of the electron, one half m v squared, uh, is equal to the energy that it picked up uh, because of the potential difference. So as it was accelerated through the potential difference. Okay. Now, if you do some uh, some mathematics in here, just uh, I'm trying to, on the right side, I'm trying to get the momentum. So right here, I put the, the one half, I took the two on the left side, and uh, then I'm multiplying both sides by the m mass of the electron to get momentum of the electron squared on the right side. And then, of course, you square root. And so we have the momentum of an electron given by this uh, equation in here, the square root of two times the mass of the electron times the potential difference times the charge of an electron. You have that on page 337. Let me show that to you right here. There is the equation for the um, momentum of the electron right there. Okay. And so then you, you take that equation for the momentum of the electron and you shove it in here into the wavelength being equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And then you end up with this equation right here. Um, so that's how you calculate the wavelength of, of a particle of an electron, for example, knowing through what potential difference it was accelerated. You, of course, have that equation in your book right there. So if, if you were told that here is an electron, it was accelerated through 10 volts of potential difference, the 10 would go there. Here is, this is the elementary charge, so 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. This, of course, is the mass of the electron. You would be given that, or whatever particle it might be. It could be a proton, and the proton was accelerated through some potential difference. You know the Planck's constant, so we can calculate the, the wavelength of the particle, and you you use this equation to start with, right here when you are uh, working out any problem with matter waves. So this would be your starting point if you don't remember the equation. If you're given the equation for the you know for the wavelength right here, if you're given this equation for the wavelength, oh now it's blurry. Okay, this equation 
if you're given this equation, you don't have to, you know, start deriving this equation. Um, but it, don't worry if you don't have this equation. You can always start right here and end up right there, just knowing, uh, you know, doing some simple, simple mathematics. This is not difficult. You can do this.